Okay, so in the previous video we set up a way we can use our mouse to control objects in 3D space. So we set up a raycast hit and where that hit collides with the terrain the points are, are referenced and the objects moved to those points. That's what we've done here. It updates on every single frame but we don't want that to happen in our game. We just want this diamond to be a confirmation that we've right clicked in a position. So we want to control a unit to go to a particular position. We right click to say yep go here. We want this object to confirm that we clicked that and uh, then we want the object to disappear basically. So I'm going to do that in this video. But first there's a couple of issues I forgot to mention in the previous video. So what if uh, my raycast hits multiple objects? What if there's like a massive army here and the raycast goes through lots of units and what information does it store? And the answer is the raycast hit only stores information for the first thing it collides with. Okay, So it ignores everything else. But if you want it to be the other way around, if you want an object to ignore the raycast, we can go to the layers drop down and assign it to ignore the, the ignore raycast layer alright so then the totally ignored okay guys so and the other thing I forgot to do in the previous video is to change the origin of the diamond to around here so I'm going to create a new game object I'm going to call this one target and parents this one and call this just call just call this one diamond let's just call this one diamond so the target origin is there alright let's just zero this out to start with so the origin is there I want the diamond to appear above it so okay so yeah that'd be about right I think move it down a bit and it's a bit big I think so I'm just going to make it a bit smaller and put it about there okay so let's just test that before we move on and uh, yeah, so now the entire diamond is above the terrain, okay? And this will come in handy later on because we're going to animate this to sink down into the terrain. And we, we cannot animate this by default because we're using its position attributes already to control where the, it's going to be in the scene. So we need to animate, we need to, to uh, manipulate the diamond position instead inside it. But we'll get that to that, to that later. Alright guys, so... Alright, so I don't need this anymore. We're going to use a different method. We don't need this anymore. So when we click, so when we click the right mouse button, we want to instantiate this target. Alright, so to do this, we're going to create a public game object. Let's call it target. Let's go back to our script. Okay. So let's replace this again. Let's replace the target prefab firstly with the one and possibly unwanted prefab replacement. Unity flags this up in case we do this by mistake, but yeah, we do want to replace this object. There's another object there. Let's go to our scripts and drag the target here. So that's referenced. And now we can set this up. So if input dot get mouse button down and we want the index of one, okay, so each mouse button has an index so take notes of this guys if you don't know so 0 is the left mouse button 1 is the right mouse button and 2 is the middle mouse button okay so the scroll wheel if the button's down we would instantiate the target object so let's just call this let's just call it target object shall we so let's make it a game object quite important actually instantiate we want to instantiate it at the point where the raycast hits the terrain. So all that information is stored in our hit and we want the point. So hit point. And for the rotation, oh sorry guys, I forgot something. We want to instantiate the target object, so we need the object to instantiate. As for the rotation, we need the quaternion, so I I'm just going to use the default world rotation. So to do this we just put quaternion identity. So kind of a default value there. Let's just cast it as a game object. So, if this changes, then we want this to be a game object just to let Unity know. We can give it a name if we want to. Let's just call it target. Alright, so target instantiated. Because we're not going to refer to this just yet, so when we instantiate it, it will appear in our hierarchy and we'll be able to know which one it is. So, and I think that'll do for now. Let's test it out, see if it works. So when I right click, these are getting created. And it's all well and good, but they're not removing themselves from the scene and things get pretty cluttered very quickly. We don't need this one in the scene anymore. So to deal with this issue, 
I'm going to make the diamond disappear, sink down into the grass or the terrain, and then it's going to delete itself. And to do this, we can animate it. That's why I've got the animation tab open here. So let's just click the diamond. We don't want to animate, like I said, we don't want to animate the target object because its position has already been used by the hit point. So we want to manipulate the position already. We don't want to animate it in another position. So we're going to animate the diamond instead. Another good reason to pair in this to the, t to the target. All right, guys. So let's open our animation panel. Let's start the animation. We're going to create one called uh, animations folder. Let's put that in there. Um, target sync, for example. Target sync. So it's going to sync into the ground create a um, keyframe here so just drag it if, even if we drag in the scene it will create a uh, keyframe so we want it to hang around for a little bit so maybe um, a fifth of a second or something so let's create another keyframe here and when it gets to say 0.55 or seconds whatever let's drag it down into the into the terrain okay so if we scroll through, boom. So it stays for a little bit. It kind of moves up and down for some reason. We can edit this later on, but it doesn't really matter. Again, this is a placeholder graphic. We're not going to use this in the final game. So it doesn't really matter at this particular moment. Select the diamond. Remember the diamond. Then it goes down. All right, guys. But now we want it to delete itself. And to do that, we're going to add an event by clicking this button. So we can add any event or a function we've coded through script anywhere on this animation timeline. So here, if we click it, we can select a function, but there's nothing to select at the moment. So I'm going to create a very simple script and let's say destroy object or something, destroy game object. All right, so open it out. Very, very simple. So let's create a new function. So we don't want to return anything. Let's just say destroy object. I don't want it to name the same as the class just to keep things simple. All we need to do is say destroy, if I can spell destroy right, destroy this game object. So it's destroying the object this script is attached to. Simple as that, that's all we need. Okay, so I think we might need to destroy the parent, so the target object rather than the diamond. So so if we want to delete the parent game object, so the target object rather than the diamond one, there's quite a long line of code. It's game object dot transform dot parent dot game object. Okay, so quite a long one to remember there. And we need to change this to destroy parent game object just to keep things uh simple. Let's change this as well. Alright, so all we need to do now, go to our diamond and put the scripts on here, which we can either drag it in here or go to component scripts and destroy parent game objects within the diamond one. Okay, so let's go back to our animation, let's go back to the function and put destroy objects. So there it is, that's the one we need. So once it's sunk into the ground, it will destroy itself rather than just like snap and destroy itself straight away. That won't be very good. So we can stop recording now, save it out, go back to our hierarchy, replace the prefab again. Okay. And let's just double check the animation. Target sync. Yep, that's the one. So let's see if this works now, shall we? So playing the game. Oh, that one worked anyway. So right click, boom. Right clicking again. And then it deletes itself once it's once it's um, sunk down. So that's how we do it, guys. So that's really good. Now we can say, "Yep, unit, go here." I know he's going to go there because the graphic played. <laughs> All right. So that's that video done. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to remove that from the scene actually before I continue. So in the previous video we found a game object within the scene in this video we referenced a prefab in the script so works pretty well so we can do multiple ones at the same time if we wanted to and they'll delete themselves so i hope you learned a lot in this video guys thanks for watching the video i'll see you soon thanks